God, it's so good that uh, you're able to join us today as we worship together in a different way. I want us today just to lean into God at this time and, and as we worship uh, wherever you are right now to, uh, to look to Him uh, in the midst of all that's going on in the world around us. Uh, we are anchored to the rock, Jesus. The world around us might be shaking and things are changing rapidly, but we stand on Him this morning. I want to give you a verse just before we worship together. It's from 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. And it says, Cast your cares upon the Lord, for He cares for you. And as we sing these songs, as you worship, however you want to worship, I want you to cast your cares on Him. As we think about Jesus, as we anchor ourselves to Him, cast your cares on Him. And listen to this. For He cares for you. He cares for you. And uh, just let that thought uh, really sink in at this time. He cares for you. Why don't we worship together now? God bless you as we do that. Savior, there is power. 
hands on you this morning. And we declare wherever we are in this point of time that you are God. You are Lord above all. You're our anchor in the storm. You're our light when the world around us seems dark. And so this morning, Jesus, we just fix our eyes on you. Would you just come and minister wherever we are in these moments, God? May we sense your spirit upon us. May we know that we don't walk alone, that your presence goes before us, is all around us. And in those moments of fear and anxiety, we turn and we choose to fix our eyes on you, Lord. Because you are high above. You're above all the chaos, all the confusion, all the pain, all that's happening, God. And in these moments, we choose you. May we walk out each day choosing you, fixing our eyes on you, Lord. Thank you for for tuning in. I wanted to bring you an update in terms of COVID-19 from the Salvation Army here at Johnstable's perspective, uh, really in terms of our Sunday gathering. So we've chosen for for the health of uh, ourselves, each other, and our community, not to gather together publicly, but to to bring you um, an update online and also some thoughts maybe to encourage us in the midst of this. Uh, This is a difficult time for all of us. Many people, um, well, all of us affected in different ways. There's those who obviously who who have the sickness, who around the world have lost loved ones. There's others who uh, financially uh, at this time very difficult. Um, Job losses, uncertainty about the future of their work, and and, you know travel arrangements just been um, turned upside down. And 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 so many people um, are very afraid, very fearful. Um, anxious and just you know wondering you know what do we do in the midst of this you know difficult time we and for us you know we uh, as a church as believers well we're anchored to to the rock who is Jesus and so so the world around us has been shaken but but we know that uh, for us that we stand on the rock who, who he is unshakable unmovable eternal God and so this is not a time in a sense for us to to shrink back in our faith to to uh, have a posture of defeat, but this is an opportunity for us to rise up and and to be seen to have faith and courage uh, in the midst of this, um, uh, all that's going on around us. And so the question that really um, I want us to have a think about today is um, how do we overflow with faith and, and courage in the midst of difficulty, in the midst of all that's going on around us, as we as, as disciples of Jesus, as followers of how do we have courage, how do we have faith uh, in the midst of this? And I want us to look, um, if you're there at home, just to grab your Bible, we're going to uh, just have a look at some scriptures, and we're going to have a look at John the Baptist, and, and so we will um, have a look at some verses, jump around a little bit, but this is uh, just a thought uh, at this time that hopefully will uh, encourage you Uh, where you're at. And so if you've got your Bible, have a look at John chapter 1, verse 34. And this is uh, a moment where where John has uh, encountered, Jesus has come to him to be water baptized in the Jordan River. And and what John is doing is he's he's making this declaration to the masses, to everyone who's there, who's witnessing this moment of Jesus coming, and he's water baptized him, and now Jesus is there, and and John makes this incredible statement in, in verse 34 of chapter one: "I have seen 
and I testify this is the Son of God. This is an incredible uh, statement of certainty, of, uh, of absolute, uh, absoluteness in the sense of, of knowing who Jesus is. Look at it again, chapter 1, verse 34. I have seen and I testify that this is the Son of God. There's incredible certainty and confidence, absolutely no doubt in John's mind about who Jesus is. Well, now if you want to flick over to Matthew chapter 11, have, have a look at Matthew chapter 11 um, in your Bible. And this, is, this has moved on a little bit now, uh, probably between one or two years later. Here is John, and he is now in prison. And, uh, and so his world is very different from there he was, just a thriving ministry of the Jordan River, seeing many, many people repenting, coming to faith, turning to God, and then baptizing Jesus and was certainly saying, this is the Son of God, to now being in prison um, and uh, in this sort of dark place, a uh, low time where his world has been turned upside down. And look what he does in Matthew chapter 11, verse 2. This is what John does. He sends two of his followers to go to Jesus with this question. Are you the one who was to come, or should we expect someone else? Can you see the shift that has taken place from John earlier on when he met Jesus? Absolute confidence and certainty in, in terms of who Jesus was. This is the Son of God. To now as he's sitting in prison, uh, very different. He's questioning, you know, are you the one? Or should we look for someone else? So, so in this dark time, his world has been turned upside down, has been shaken. He's, he's, he's uncertain about who Jesus is and about uh, uh, his own confidence in him being the Messiah. And part of this, I think, is, is because uh, of what happened for Jesus. After Jesus was baptized, uh, he got up in his first sermon. So John has just finished baptizing him. And now Jesus goes into the synagogue. And in Luke chapter 4, uh, you'll find Jesus gets up in front of everyone and says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, quoting Isaiah. And he's anointed me. To do some things. This is the sense of Jesus declaring his purpose. And he says he's anointed to proclaim freedom for the prisoners. This is his, his verse, first declaration to the world. I'm here to proclaim freedom to the prisoners. Well, where is John right now? He's sitting in prison. And he's remembering, well, hang on a minute. Jesus said he was to, here to proclaim freedom to the prisoners. Well, I'm still sitting in prison. So, so where you go, guys? Go and ask Jesus if he's the one. Is he the one that was to come? Or should we be looking for someone else? And so you can understand, here is John in this difficult place. His world has been turned upside down. He's in this dark valley time. And away his disciples go to find Jesus. And so they come to Jesus. And if we go to Matthew chapter 11, uh, verse 4, this is Jesus' response to the to men that John has sent them. He, they, he says in verse 4, Go back and report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive sight. The lame walk, those who have leprosy are cured, the deaf hear, and the dead are raised. And the good news is preached to the poor. It's an incredible moment. Like in Luke's gospel, just as John's disciples are arriving to ask Jesus uh, the question, these miracles are actually taking place. And so what is Jesus doing here? Well, the, the guys arrive having been sent from John, and Jesus begins to introduce them to people. You know, this guy, come and meet this guy. He's just... Uh, he was blind, but now he can see. And, and then he takes him to someone else. You know, this guy, well, he was paralyzed, he, and now he can walk. And this one over here, well, well, he was dead, and now is alive. Leprosy, now cured. And, and what's more, and the greatest miracle, these people over here, they are, uh, have heard the good news and they've responded and now put their faith in me. John, uh, go back and tell John the good work that he started is now being continued, that people are still turning, still putting their faith in God. And so, so these guys, you can just see them going back. And Jesus sends them back with all these testimonies of God's goodness, of miracles, to share with John. And, and away they go to do that. So what is Jesus doing in this moment for John as John sits there in that prison cell? He's going back and, and he's with these guys to share these testimonies. Why? Because he's wanting to bring a shift in what John is feeding his spirit. See, at the moment, as John sits in prison, he's, he's feeding his spirit on what God isn't doing. I'm, I'm a prisoner. Jesus should be setting me free. It isn't happening. And so he's spiraling. He's discouraged. He's becoming more and more despondent. And, and, uh, 
and down and, and, and upset at this time. And so his guy, these guys will come back with these testimonies of God's goodness. And so Jesus is trying to shift his focus from what God isn't doing onto what God is doing. And I think that's a key for you and I at this time. As we look around as in this world at this moment, you know, there's many things that if we continue to feed our spirit on, on, on the progress of, of this virus and why isn't God stopping this? Why isn't God protecting? Uh, as, you know, we can, we can become more and more despondent and discouraged. It's important for us right at this moment in time to actually feed our spirit on what God has done and on what he is doing. And that will build faith and courage within us at this moment. So, so very important. You might find yourself that you, you, you're not getting out as much, that you've got a bit more time at home. So what I would encourage you to do is, is actually reflect on your journey. Reflect on those times where, where God has answered prayer, where there has been a moment of breakthrough, where, where you've seen uh, someone you've prayed with um, experience healing or a miracle, and feed your spirit on the things that God has done and the things that he is doing right now so that you can continue to allow faith and courage to build within you. This was a, the key that God was doing here through Jesus for John was restoring hope in who Jesus was. He was restoring hope in who Jesus was for John. John had lost hope. And now with these testimonies of, of amazing things, hope was being restored. And that is what Jesus is about, you know, this time. But for you and I as, as followers of Christ, you know, as we follow him, he is our source of hope. He is our source of life. And we want to um, become that for others as we depend and anchor ourselves in him. Now, as you're just sitting listening to this message, and, and I'm encouraging you to get out your journal, get out your notebook, and revisit some of those uh, um, moments where you've written down answers to prayer, where you've written down verses of scripture that have incredible value and meaning to you, and soak in that stuff, meditate on it, uh, feed your spirit on it, because it will build faith and courage. But you might be listening today, and and you're feeling like, well, man, I, I just don't know hope. I, uh, my world has been turned upside around me, and, and I don't know Jesus. I, I'm, I'm not anchored to him. And, you know, um, what I would want to say to you today, if you're listening, that right now you can um, put your faith in Jesus in the midst of what is happening in the world. You can put your faith in him now. You can come to know Jesus in the midst of what is happening in the world. And, and, and all you have to do is, is I'd invite you to pray this prayer with me today. Pray this prayer and invite Jesus to be a part of your world and so that you can have him on this journey. So let's pray. And if you're there at home and you want to join in with this prayer, you pray it together. Repeat after me as we pray together. Heavenly Father, I choose today to believe in Jesus Christ, to believe that he died and rose again. Thank you for your free gift of eternal life. I give you my past. Forgive me and cleanse me from all sin and wrongdoing. I receive your love. You are my heavenly father. I am your child. I put my hope in you. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, um, you know, God has heard that prayer and that you have become a child of his. The Bible says that you are now a new creation. The old is gone. The new has come. And you have a fresh start. He fills you with his love and gives you the free gift of eternal life. And the good news is, is that now you are anchored to him. And if you if you prayed that prayer right now, uh, we'd love to uh, get hold of you and, and give you a Bible and, and talk some more about this. Um, right now you can get in touch with me. Uh, email address um, there and we'll talk with you more about that decision. Well, God bless. We're going to continue to uh, keep updates coming via our Facebook page and also email. Um, we pray that God would be with you, that you would know his peace, that you'd know his protection, and that you'd know his wisdom at this time. God bless you.
Stop. 